right. So we're we're two less than nine. But the reason that this worksheet is going to take the place of our workbook is because I think I've explained this before. Every now and then we come to something in our Eureka Math book and the way they're teaching it versus what we think might be easiest for you to understand, not always the same. And so we've changed a few things. There's nothing wrong with what's in the book. It's just through my experience over the years, it's a little more confusing than it is helpful. So we're going to do it a little differently uh, that will hopefully help us. Okay. Let's put the tops on our markers. We don't need them just yet. I do want to show you this, okay? Now, we are very familiar with this. I don't want you to draw this. I just want you to listen for just a second. It says, or don't draw it yet anyway. What fraction is represented? So, I know there's a lot of pieces up here. See if you can take just a second and count them up. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, what fraction gauge are we seeing here? Twelve. Okay, say it the other way. Six. There you go. Six twelfths. Okay. We have twelve total pieces. We have six of them shaded. Now look at what it says. It says, do you see any equivalent fractions? Now this is what they mean. Can you just look at this for a second? Look at what's shaded and what's not shaded. Even if I took out all the lines in the middle, I know they're not dotted, but if I took out all the lines in the middle, how much of that would be shaded? About. Look at it. Look at the orange part. What do you think? Yeah, it's about half, isn't it? Like if this was like a candy bar and you had to... You had to share with your brother or sister or something, and you had to, you know, break it. That's about where you would break it, or try, right? <laughs> Oops, my piece is bigger. You know. No. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So let's say that we think six twelfths might be equivalent to one half. Let's try to prove it. Okay. So let's do this on our board. Let's all just use this to look at, but we're going to put some numbers, some fractions on our board. On your board, let's see. Um, let me clear that off and I'll put it up here. Put 6 twelfths. Put that fraction first. Put 6 twelfths. Okay. And then I want you to put equals 1 half. Okay. Now, I really want you to look at what's on your board. Uh, yeah, it's up here too, so if you need to look up here too. All right. Let's try to prove this. How can we get, I mean, think of everything we've done over the last several days this week. How can we get from six to one? Or how could we get from 12 to 2? We know we can look at either one of those. But I, can I tell you something? Let me give you an illustration that we used next door yesterday afternoon. Did y'all know that when you multiply something, the, the, it gets larger? Like the answer is larger. Okay. Um, if I take 3 and I take 4 and I multiply them together, my answer is 12. It's bigger than both of those two numbers, isn't it? Okay, most of the time, you know, our, our number is going to get larger when we multiply. Think of, this is the illustration we used. Think of um, plants. Sometimes there are plants. Let's put the tops on our markers right now so that we're listening. Um, there's a plant called a hosta. You might have them in your yard. But when you plant them, from what I've heard, I wish I had some, but I don't right now. Uh, they, they multiply like all of a sudden there's more and more and more of them and people will have have to clean them out of their yard and take them out and some people will give them to other people some people will throw them away 
they, they multiply. There's probably other plants that do that too, okay? When something multiplies, there's more of it, okay? But, but look, we're going from 6 to 1 here. If I multiply and my answer, our number gets bigger, you know, is there a way in math to get from 6 to 1? What what would we do? Or from twelve to two? Can you do that? Yeah. Okay, but we're not. You could, and I almost said we're not going to do addition and subtraction. Um, almost took that off the table for you to think about. What? Division? Yeah, I heard it over here too. Okay. And I didn't say it's on the board, I just didn't say it. I was like, I really want y'all to come up with this idea yourself because I know you can. How, if we use division, which is the opposite of multiplication, so they kind of work together. That's why kind of subtraction addition is not really part of this. It's more multiplication and division because they work so closely together. If we're thinking division, how can we go from six to one? What do you multiply? See, I'm going to do this over and over. What do we divide 6 by to get 1? Come on, guys. Probably one of the easiest problems we're going to do today. But 6. Yeah. If I divide 6 by 6, how many times can I get a group of 6 out of 6? One time. <coughs> but if I divide the top by 6... I yeah, gotta divide the, the bottom, bottom by six. That's how I found okay. It. Same thing, guys. If I multiply the top by a number, I have to multiply the bottom by. If I divide the top by a number, I have to divide the, the bottom, the new uh, the denominator by that same number. Is twelve divided by six two? Yes. Can I get two groups of six out of twelve? That's yes. Okay. Now, sometimes, even with the division facts that are smaller, we have to stop and think a little bit longer than we do with multiplication. Do you have to stop and think about subtraction a little bit more than you do addition sometimes? Sometimes? Sometimes. Same thing with division. Division takes us just a little bit more thinking sometimes uh, than multiplication. Maybe not with everybody, but with a lot of folks. Okay, so we're going to be doing the exact same thing that we do with multiplication, we're going to be doing it with division. Okay, let's let's try one more on the board, and then we will uh, go back to these problems that are in front of us on the worksheet. Okay, now they want us to draw a model. I'm going to stop us right there, and this is why. There is a way to draw the tape diagram, and you do this kind of really different grouping method and it shows the division. It can be done. I will say this. It's a little on the confusing side. I don't think right now we're doing good. We don't need anything to make us go I'm confused. Okay? So I decided to take that out. That's why we're not getting into the workbook. Okay? Uh, Miss Megan and I talked and we just decided let's just leave that alone. It's just confusing. Let's just go with what we've got. Okay? So let's forget all of this. We're not going to draw anything right now. We are going to write on our board the fraction. Okay. So put on your board two eighths. Okay. All right. Now let's see what we're going to do with two eighths. We are going to make an equivalent fraction using division. But you know what? I can't. This is this is the tough part with division, guys. Listen to me. With multiplication, I could pick any number, any number, and multiply it by. It. So I asked y'all to not do one or zero. With division, it has to be a number that can divide evenly into both of them. There's not as many numbers to pick from. I can't pick any old number. Can I pick three? No. Can I divide two evenly with a three? I can't. 
but I'm going to try to pick a number that I know can be divided into both of those. Look at both of those numbers. Think about what we know about division. What do you think, Mason? Okay. Now, are, they're both even, aren't they? That's another clue that 2 is a factor here. So, Mason says, let's divide by 2. Because, again, we're going to try to stay away from 0 and 1. Well, the only other number left right here is, is 2, isn't it? Okay. What happens when I divide a number by itself? Yeah, you get 1 every time. Okay. 2 divided by 2 is 1. A million divided by a million is 1. Because all you're asking is how many groups of that number can I get out of that number? One. If I have five, I can only get one group of five right there. Okay. What about eight divided by two? Now think of your fact families. What goes with eight and two in multiplication and division? Which number is missing? Four. Four. Okay. Eight divided by two is four. Because in eight, I can get four groups of two. Okay. So two eighths and one-fourth are equal to each other. Really? 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 Okay. Let's prove it with our pizza just for a second. Maybe you won't be too hungry with it now because you just ate. Here's one-fourth, right? Here are my eights. This is easier to see if I'll turn it this way. And if I can get them off the board. Here are two eights. Are they equal to each other? Yeah. They both fit right on top of that one fourth. Okay. So, just another way to see it. All right, pull out your worksheet. We're just kind of having to work quickly because we don't have a ton of time. Ooh, we really don't have a ton of time. Okay. So, put up your whiteboard, your marker. Let's see if you can do that in five, four, three. Two and a half. Thank you, Barton. Two. One and a half. One. Zero. Three fourths. One half. Zero. One fourth. Zero. No, we don't need that today. Because your problem set is your worksheet today. So those of you. Those of you at home, there's a worksheet that is on the Google Classroom. There's a picture of it. You're going to have to write the problems on your own paper at home. Um, but that is our problem set today. I need you to turn to the side with the shapes. And I think there's three problems that we circle. Yeah. Two, four, and eight. Right? Yeah. Okay. If you will give me a second. I do have that on the board now. So let me change to that. Okay, let's let's not. All right, is this gonna work? Are you gonna work? Yay! Okay, this just makes it easier for us to see. All right, so let's start with problem two. Now, earlier, if you saw these, uh, Will's hand was up. He caught it right away. This is different. We are going from a larger, you know, more pieces of the of the whole, and we're not used to doing that. Something about this problem is different. Um, let me try to make this a little larger. So we start with four eighths here that we shade in. So let's go ahead and do these together. Shade in four of the eighths. And if it's easier for you to see by doing this, I do like the fractions better when they have the straight line. I, I'm just writing it differently so that it, because it's easier to do that way. Okay, so what we're trying to do is figure out how many of these. Well, what what is the denominator here? Four. Four. Okay, well, they've given it to us, so let's write that in. They've given us half the fraction. They've 
helped us do half the work. Okay, so make sure you've done that, written that down. Now, what we've got to figure out is how many of these eighths, you know, I mean, how many fourths will four eighths be? Got to make sure I say that correctly. Okay, now, I'm not going to look at the picture anymore. I'm going to look at the numbers. How can I go from eight to four? Now that we know that little bit of information I just gave you a few minutes ago about division, if, if, if I'm starting with 8, I'm going to 4, I know I'm not multiplying because the number's not getting larger. I'm going to have to divide. Okay, that's your clue that you're going from a larger number to a smaller number. How can I get from 8 to 4 with division? Yeah. Divided by 2. Okay. Can both of those numbers be divided by 2? Yeah. How do you know that immediately? How do you know that immediately? It is a fact family. What were you going to say? I'm going to say 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so still the fact family. But how do I know immediately that these two numbers can be, um, sorry, these two numbers can both be divided by 4, divided by 2? <laughs> they are even numbers, okay? All right, so 4 divided by 2 and 8 divided by 2. What is 4 divided by 2? Everybody can help. 2. Okay, it is. You want to check yourself? Then look. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. You can go both directions with that. Okay. 8 divided by 2, is it 4? Is that a true statement? It is. It is. So, 2 fourths, and let's shade that in. So if we took those four eighths and we laid them right on top of that two fourths, they would be exactly the same size because our boxes are the same size. This is easy. Yeah, it really is not not difficult, but I just needed to make sure we saw that we can use division and multiplication to create an equivalent fraction. All right, go down to the next one, which is number four. Now, oh yeah, four. Number four. Why do you think that's not my favorite problem there? Because there's a zero. Yeah. Zero is not typically a number that you see with fractions. It's okay for us to have it there. Because look. <laughs> if somebody asked me, hey, Ma, you know, I've got two boys at home who love to eat. Is there any of that pizza left? There, I'll just do it with this one. Um... There are zero fourths left of that pizza. <laughs> you know, could that be true? Yeah. yeah. We, could, we could have a zero there. But usually we just say zero. If there's zero fourths, then there's just zero. We don't usually say it like a fraction. Okay. All right. Um, how about I do that so we can see it better. So would you shade in zero six right now? No. 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 <laughs> What? Hurry, it's going to take you a really long time. Okay, so we don't have to shade anything. What can we divide by to get... What number do we know over here on this side? Two. We do know the two. There are two pieces total. I don't know what to do with that zero. I hope Miss Wendy doesn't make me mess with that zero. Well, if you don't know what to do with the zero, go down. You do know what to do here. Because whatever you do on the bottom, you've got to do the same thing on the top. So that's going to help you. How can I get, I'm going from larger to smaller, so I know that division. Charlotte, how can I get from 6 to 2? 6 divided by 3. Divided by what? Divided by 3. Yeah, exactly right. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. And 0 divided by 3. Now if you're staring at that. And that confuses you. This is what I want you to do. Because I know you know how to do this. Here we go. Zero divided by three. If you saw it like that, would you know what to do? That's so hard. No. Are you being, are you being funny? Okay. It's not hard. Because you ask yourself, how many groups of three can I get out of zero? Zero. Zero. Okay. So our answer here is zero. Oh my god, that took like five. 
Guess what? There is no double check. If I have zero of this one, I'm going to have zero of this one if I'm trying to find out an equal fraction. Zero equals zero. <laughs> It's not, you know, pizza is not going to magically appear. Pizza's bad. Okay. It disappeared. Well, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> put it back. Okay. All right, no, that one didn't. <laughs> okay, let's not go there. Not after lunch. <laughs> All right, what do we got left? Just eight? Okay. All right, so shade in three of the six pieces. You already know the denominator of the next fraction, so put that because we need every clue we can get to help us. How can we go from 6 to 2? Didn't we just answer that question a second ago? Yeah. Divide. Okay. We divide it by what? 3. We divide it by 3. Divide it by 3. Divide it by 3 or 3. The problem on the top is a little different. 6 divided by 3 is 2. That's a true statement. What is 3 divided by 3? What do we say if a number divides by itself? It's 1. It's 1. If I have 3 right here, how many groups of 3 can I get? Just one group of 3. So shade that in. But even with looking at just the pictures, doesn't this look like half of it right here? And there's half of it right there. So the picture is showing you one half. Can we do this side? You already have done that side. Give me a chance. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So tomorrow we're going to keep practicing this. I'm going to let you just go ahead and take this sheet home. So go ahead and put this in your binder to go home. Somebody please remind me tomorrow. Since it's Friday and the whole week has gone by, I have a stack of papers to pass out that have been sitting here all week. So we just get busy. It's just like graded stuff that we, you know, I've had it for a while. I just run out of time to pass things out sometimes. Okay. So people at home, we did this worksheet earlier today because of our little bit different schedule. So you work on that. You work on that worksheet right now and get it finished on both sides. Okie doke. Can I throw some papers away that I don't need? Not here.